Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, guess what? Tomorrow is the last day of the month of February. Now, I'm going to tell you afterwards before this broadcast ends so you prepare for our monthly prayer and fasting meeting praise god now before we go into today's broadcast can we make requests for our daily bread listen to me everything that is owed you for february within these two days it's my prayer that the lord will supply you abundantly in the name of the lord jesus christ so join me and release your faith now say father i demand now my daily bread it's coming to me in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus hey listen to me don't neglect the instruction the lord has given don't don't i shared a message to you on monday even as i share today i still feel that body in my heart we're talking about the glory of Jesus but you see the reason you know on, on Monday if you listen to Monday's or if you've listened to my series on tithes and offerings you would have heard me say this a lot the tithe belongs to God. Now, I don't know why I'm sharing this again, but I believe it's for someone. The tithe belongs to God. Okay? And since it belongs to Him, He has not sent a representative to collect it for Him. Every child of God must be in touch with the Spirit of God for instructions concerning the tithe. And now this is the mind of God concerning the tithe. God sets up the tithing system. It is his method to distribute things to his children. Yeah. That's God's method. So hear me. When you take your tithe to the Lord and he commands you who to give it to, it's your job to obey him. It's not your job to start judging. Hey, but, but I thought you would tell me to give it to the pastor. I thought God can tell you to give your tithe to a brother. God can tell you to, oh, hey, hey, no, the tithe is for the Levites. Who said? Moses said so. Okay. Can we read what Moses said too? The tithe also belongs to widows, to foreigners. For, he didn't say foreign Levites. <laughs> no. He said, foreigners, orphans. Now you see all this category of people. They are people God takes care of. Now that's, the, that's, the, that's what Moses was driving out and um, driving into the heads of the people. Is it foreigner? You know, there was one from a foreign land. He is still trying to get his feet. You know that now. So God made provision for him in the tight. Widows, they've lost their husband. They've most likely lost their breadwinner. And you know how people toss them to and fro. God made provision for them because they are God's responsibility. Orphans, they've lost their parents. And you know how that sounds or how that is in, in, in reality. So God makes provision for them. So you find widows, orphans, strangers, and then the Levites. Because God instructed the Levites. They are, they, are, they are a clan. They are a, a, a people separated unto God. So they are to focus on the work of God. And so God said, the tithe belongs to them. Now, today, now that's the shadow aspect, see. So God had to draw all those patterns for them. Today, the Holy Spirit have been given to us. And remember, 
Even Moses said, time is coming when I will write the law in their heart. Jeremiah spoke about it. Moses spoke about it. I will write the law in their hearts. And they will not need anybody to say, this is how to serve the Lord. See? Why? The same thing John said. You have no need that any man should teach you. But as the Holy Spirit teaches you, and it's true, even so you must abide in him. So today, we have the Holy Spirit who instructs us. Now, I have not seen a man who's genuinely walking by faith and receiving provision from the Lord constantly. Now, when I mean constantly, I mean one who's depend. I hear preachers today boldly say, I don't, I don't depend on church for, um, for, I don't live by tithes and offering. I say, so what do you live by? Oh, I have my businesses. I have my, those preachers are in error. Believe me, they're in error. You are in error. You are acting like you are ashamed of the one who called you. Paul said something. Those who preach the gospel should live by the gospel. Now, when he said they should live by the gospel, what's he saying? He's not saying they should start selling gospel materials to make money. That's not what he was saying. You know, people confuse this thing. They'll say, after Paul was a tent maker. In what context did Paul say he was a tent maker? Did you see him selling tents and making money? Oh, Paul said, by my own hands. Did you see what he did? Did you know what he meant by, by my own hands? See, if you have not walked in realms like that, you will not even understand what they are talking about. When Paul said he was a tent maker, he wasn't referring to his doing business of tent making. He, could, he couldn't have even had time to be doing all that, traveling here and there. He doesn't know where God is going to tell him to go next. See that now? But he grew up, he grew up making tents. You know, the Jewish family, every family have their craft. So he grew up making this. So Paul personally actually knows how to make tents. Okay. And Paul got into this environment and he saw uh, people making tents. So as a tent maker himself, he found an opportunity to communicate with those people. That's how he met. I think that's how he met Aquila and Priscilla. He found an opportunity to communicate to those people, just like today. You know, we, you, the, all of us studied various crafts, you know, maybe in school or handwork that you... You, you study it doesn't necessarily mean you're practicing that today, okay? But now, the time you spent in school, the time you spent learning, those things were not in vain. Okay, now you, you go to a place where you see people um, doing stuff and like, ah, I know this thing. Now, what's, what's that? That can open door for you to reach out to those people. And you look at what they are doing and you say, oh, these guys are making mistakes. There are times I've gone to a building site like, hey, they're making a mistake there. See, can you look at this thing again? And they check like, oh, thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. Would I miss this thing? Thank you so much. See, now that has opened the door. Automatically, you gain respect. Okay. Now you can now say, do you know, it was the Holy Spirit that actually showed me this thing. Uh, wow. You mean the Holy Spirit shows? Oh, yes, he does. Jesus said, you see, an opportunity to preach the gospel has come. And that's all Paul meant when he made reference to himself being a tent maker. Praise God. You know, say, hey, hey, everybody, you, you hear people say all kinds of things. And listen, loving God and understanding God is not the same thing. There are people who love God, but they don't understand Him. Because there are people who you will meet and they will tell you, and, and that's the truth. There is no one who has gone deep with God. Because God, now every spirit is a jealous spirit. So it's the nature of spirits. Jealousy is nature, nature of spirits. So even the Holy Spirit himself is a jealous spirit. There is no way you walk with the Holy Spirit that he would like it that you attribute your success, your blessing to anything else but him. Now, when I mean attribute, I'm sharing this because of someone. When I mean attribute, I'm not saying all he wants for you to say, it is God though. You know, like a lot of people, do. it's God though. Hmm. If not for God, I wouldn't have gotten that contract. If not for God, but truly speaking, 
and uh, between us, how did God do it? No, I applied, I spoke to that person, you know, I, I did this and I did this and I, I was qualified, so they, I, I got it. It must, it must be God. Okay, the unbeliever that got it also, was it God? Uh, of course now it's, it's God. So what's the difference between you and him? He's not going to thank God. You are going to thank God. But you got the same thing. See that now? Now so, but there is a way. So that's not the kind of glory that he loves. The glory that he loves is the one that you can use his word to explain that blessing, to explain that miracle. You can see how? Yes, you have a company and you're trusting God for finances. And suddenly the word of the Lord com comes to you and says, go to so and so place. Hey Lord, but I don't know anybody there. Go there. Lord, go. Okay, sir. And then you get there. And when you get there, you meet someone. So who are you looking for? Um, I don't know. I'm engineer. So, so you're an engineer? Yeah. Oh, really? Do you know we're looking for an engineer? There's one we've been expecting since money to come. He didn't show up. Can you do so so and so say? Oh yeah, I can. Oh, really? You have a company? Yes. Okay. Can you can you apply, fill this form, and do this? And say, really? And then you're watching. And before you know what's happening, a job has been given to you. It's like, whoa. Now, how did that start? The word of the Lord came to me that I should go to so so and so place. You see? Now, that kind of testimony clearly shows that this was God. You understand what I'm saying? Now that's the glory he loves. Now that one nobody can this No unbeliever can come and tell that kind of story. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? None. They will tell you, ah, me, I have camped in that organization. I say for where... Yeah, I know all the directors. I know everybody. In Every morning when they come, I greet them. I buy gifts and I send to all of them. One day, one of them now called me. I said, hey, hey, come, let's do something together. Uh, you understand? But you, without knowing anybody, even if you know someone, you will be able to trace how the word of the Lord was what opened that door for you. See? So God is looking for people who when you look at their lives, Everything they are, they can tell you how by God they got it. Everything. No stories, no hidden areas in their testimony. You know, lots of testimonies, they, God just did it somehow. No, he doesn't do it somehow. There is a way he does it. Line being upon line, precept being upon precept. Brothers and sisters, that's the kind of life he wants us to live. Now, that's how jealousy is. So, I, I, I don't understand how, you know, sometimes people look at the wrong things. You look at a minister, for example, a, a, who's big and you say, you think that minister is just living by, 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 by church money. Hey, truly speaking, he might be. Now, there are some, there are, I know there are, there are ministers whom um, God have blessed, right? And then they take the blessing of God and begin to do some business or something like that. Now, there are those God can instruct to do so, okay? But then if you look at their lives, the blessing, that business came forth from the word of God. A minister can go into real estate, but it's not real estate that made him rich. Uh -uh. He, he was blessed. And he extended by God. Now God instructed him. Not all God instructs. God instructed this one. Hey, go into this. And you will see the hand of God upon it. Now here is the truth. Whether real estate or no real estate. Whether business or no business. He's come to that place where he knows God takes care of him. Now that is one root that every child of God must carry. And the reason is very simple. We are all 24 hours waiting for God's call. See that now? And that's how jealousy is. So now then, when, when God instructed concerning the tithes, because we are all his children, please understand this, because we are all his children, we are under his care. 
And Jesus thought and his teaching was exactly the mind of God. When he said, take no thought for your life, saying, what will I eat? Or clothes, what will I put on? Now that's the teaching of Jesus. No other person taught that. And, and, and I said, Jesus was teaching the mind of God. Now push that with what people tell you today. Oh, you must have a job so that, now understand, there is the thought that people should not be lazy. Yes. But then also, don't push people in the wrong direction. Apostle Paul taught, and he says, let him that steal, steal no more. Rather, let him labor, working with his, his own hands. Now, take note of that statement. It's English. He used to steal. Okay. Why was he stealing? He was stealing so that he can have. Now, Paul says, tell him not to steal again. Because now he's born again. And I think one time I was telling the difference between the teachings of John and the teachings of Apostle Paul. John would tell him, you're still stealing. You are not saved. <laughs> it's God. But Paul would say, tell him not to steal. Instead of stealing, let him go and labor, walking with his own hands. You know what he said next? So that he, the one who used to steal before, but is now walking, when he walks, he gets money, right? So that he will have to give to the one that does not have. The one who used to steal is now instructed to go and walk. When he walks, he gets something. When he gets that, he was instructed to do with it, not eat it. He's instructed to give it. Can't you get the picture? He's stealing because he has nothing. When he walks, he gets something. What does he do with what he gets? Give it. When he gives it, what happens? It shall be given unto him. What did Jesus teach? Give and it shall be given unto you. It's a system. So even Paul never instructed you to go and labor so that you will eat. He instructed you to go and labor so that you will have to come into God's system. At least now you have something. When you give, what do you mean give? You start by giving your tithe. Now you're being paid something from, from your labor and then you give your tithe. You've started giving. You give your offering. You've started giving. And what happens? By your actions, you enter into God's system. And when you enter into God's system, you begin to function in, in that place where God takes care of you. And you know what happens? As you grow in that, and you grow in that, you now realize one day that, hey, do you know? Because now, because you're practicing this principle of God's system, you open the channel for because you're giving to others by obeying God. When you obey God and he, he commands you to tithe, and you tithe to where God commands you to tithe, you enter a system where you also, God will command someone to bring their tithes to you. It's as simple as that. Now, when, when God's children begin to work perfectly in this truth, and the Spirit of God is distributing God's wealth everywhere, tell me how anyone is going to lack no matter the recession in the land, God's children will never lack. All these things God is not about to do. He has finished doing it. We are the ones that He is trusting to come into His system and walk in His truth. Praise God. My time is up. But see, I know these messages are good for you listening to them with a heart of understanding and i pray that the holy spirit will open your ears to hear now tomorrow is the last day of the month and we are going to be having our prayer and fasting beginning from 12 midnight tomorrow okay so now we we, we meet via zoom and then we pray at every watch i'll give you more of that information tomorrow but please prepare for 
eight. God bless you. Bye.